What is up guys? So today's tier list will be looking at every season of the Arrowverse, putting them each into the tier they deserve to be in, and then in the end rearranging it to more accurately represent my actual ranking. Speaking of that ranking, I did do that video a couple weeks ago where I ranked every season of the Arrowverse based off how good it was, and the reason I'm doing this, even though it's kind of the same thing, is because for one, it's in a different format in a tier list, which uh, is different, but also I'm including the other seasons that I couldn't really include in my ranking, like Constantine Season 1, which is an incomplete season doesn't have the finale it was never released but i can put it in the tier list because oh, i can't really rank it but i definitely can put it in a tier list for uh, there's also the cw seed shows like vixen and freedom fighters the ray which i didn't include in the ranking because they're not really seasons in this tier list i'll be looking at all of these seasons which including the extra ones there are 25 of them there are there should be 26 but i haven't seen the 90s flash season so that is not being included with all of that out of the way let's start the video with Arrow Season 1. The Arrowverse had a pretty great start with Arrow Season 1. This season has a terrific season-long storyline with one of the best villains in the Arrowverse in Malcolm Merlin. The action is great, the acting is great, the drama is great, the flashbacks are great as well. There's really not much wrong with the season. There are parts of it that aren't like exciting or definitely they feel different in tone for the rest of the Arrowverse, but you can say that's kind of a good thing. I think that this is a great season that definitely deserves to be in the S tier. Arrow Season 2 is typically said to be the best season of Arrow by, I think, uh, m most of the fan base. I don't agree. I think it's the third best, but I, d I definitely understand why people think that. I think it is a little bit worse than Arrow Season 3, uh, Season 1 and 5. This season, however, is incredible. The season-long storyline is great. The main villain, Slade Wilson, is also one of the best uh, main villains in the Arrowverse, but he's actually even better than Merlin. The development over the course of the actual Season 1, but also the flashbacks of this season and the season in general for Slade Wilson is just probably the best um, build-up for any main villain in the Arrowverse this season. Definitely, it doesn't really have a lot of problems. I have one problem with it, and that is Felicity is pretty damn annoying in this season, but that's really the only problem. There's nothing else wrong with it, so I'd put it in the S tier. So then we have Arrow Season 3, which is the down the start of the downfall of Arrow, which it never really recovered from except for just one season and then uh, one storyline in another season. This season definitely I don't think is terrible at all. It's got some great action. The season-long storyline I think is terrible. I think that it's probably the worst that Arrow has ever had. It's just so stupid. The reason Rachel Ghoul is a villain in this season, is it doesn't make any sense at all. Like, he shouldn't be an antagonist. To this character so that part of it is it's it sucks it really does felicity is definitely very annoying in this in this season even more so than season two and this season is heavily focused around felicity those things definitely doesn't help this season at all i don't think it's anywhere near as bad as the following season season four but it definitely is not great and probably belongs in the d tier So you might have noticed that Constantine Season 1 was kind of awkwardly put here in the tier list, and that's because I didn't, I wasn't really going to include it. It's not a, it's not a complete season, so it isn't really fair to compare it to the rest. But since I wanted to make this video even more different than the ranking, I guess I'll include Constantine Season 1. This season doesn't have a finale, so again, it's not complete, and I'm sure the finale would have made it a lot better. For now, though, since it doesn't have one and it was never released, I don't think it's a great season. The storyline of it, uh, it, there isn't really much. It really felt like the storyline was come together in the finale, but they never got there. So with what we have, there isn't much of a storyline at all. Each episode seems completely separate from the rest, and they all feel filler, and it's kind of boring at times. The only reason it isn't just outright bad is the casting of, of Matt Ryan in the role of John Constantine. He's just so great in the role, but I really, I really don't think I could put it any higher than probably the C tier. So that brings us to The Flash Season 1. This season probably has the best season-long storyline in the Arrowverse. It seems like, at least for Arrow and The Flash, when they were starting the show, they had a storyline in mind. And I think they did it incredibly well, at least for Arrow and The Flash, not really for the rest of the Arrowverse shows. But this first season is pretty awesome. Grant Gustin is great as The Flash. The main villain, the Reverse Flash, is one of the best in the Arrowverse. Similarly to the other two, uh, the other two seasons we have in the S tier right now, the um, the the wonder of seeing the Flash using the speedster powers and everything surrounding that in the first season, I remember it. It was awesome. So I don't think the Flash season one deserves to be any lower than the S tier. 
So then there's Vixen Season 1, which since it's a CW seed show, it's automatically not very good. These shows are kind of poorly animated. I, I just There's nothing interesting about the animation. It's very boring. The uh, voice acting, for some reason, just doesn't fit the animation very well, especially like in the, in the voice sync. They don't do a very good job at that. And also the voice acting isn't good in general, or it isn't great. It doesn't fit the continuity of the Arrowverse, especially for the Ray, but uh, less so for Vixen as well. And uh, worst, worst of all, there's six episodes each. Each episode is six minutes long for a total of 36 minutes, which is basically a single episode of another show, or which it's actually less than that. So it's it's barely much of a season. So it's automatically not very good. I would say Vixen Season 1 is maybe the best of the CW seed seasons, or at least tied with Vixen Season 2. That isn't saying much, but I don't think it's terrible necessarily. I think it has some interesting things about it, and I'll be honest, I was, uh, I really like the main character of Vixen herself, but I don't think any CW seed show, as far as I've seen, will be any higher than the D tier. Arrow Season 4, obviously you already know it's my least favorite season of the Arrowverse, actually it might not be, I will get to what might be my least favorite season of the Arrowverse later, but in terms of the main 20 shows of the Arrowverse and all of the seasons, Arrow Season 4 is definitely the one I despise the most. The action in the season, for some some reason, is just so much worse than every other season of Arrow. It's the only season of Arrow that doesn't have good fight scenes. Like, it's got maybe two or three good fight scenes in the entirety of the season. The main villain sucks. The season-long storyline sucks. The drama in the season is, is, is so annoying, and there's so much Elicity, and Felicity becomes the main character. There's practically nothing good about this season whatsoever. The actual costume that Green Arrow wears, though it looks great in posters, it looks terrible in action, which might be why the action doesn't look Look great in this season there's really nothing good about this season at all so i would easily i wouldn't hesitate to put it in the f tier the Flash Season 2 continued on the success of the first season with another great one. The main villain, Zoom, or Hunter Zolomon, is the scariest and most threatening main villain in the Arrowverse, and one of the best. The season-long storyline is pretty good, and the introduction of the multiverse definitely gives it a lot of points, and the way they handle the multiverse also works very, very well. Again, this season, not really much wrong with it altogether. It definitely uh, builds on Season 1. It's not as good as Season 1, but it definitely comes close to how good the seasons of the S tier are. I don't I wouldn't put it in the S tier, but I definitely think that I would put it in the A tier as it is a great season. Supergirl Season 1 is god-awful. Supergirl has gotten better every single season, but the fact that it, it's gotten better every season and in Season 4, it's still just good, but it's not great, shows how terrible Supergirl Season 1 was. The action in this season is god-awful. It's so difficult to look at. The acting is horrible. The storyline of the season is, is, just, is just terrible. There's really no clear main villain, and the, the main villain we get near the end is probably the worst in the Arrowverse, or at least one of the worst this, se this season is chock full of just uh, so much crap. It it's not good at all. And after I watched like a couple episodes of this season, I gave up on it and I didn't really see watch it again until it was incorporated into the Arrowverse in I think like episode 16 or 17. So that's the only reason I watched the show. But literally I watched like two episodes back when it came out and I quit because it was so terrible. So I don't think this would be any higher than the F tier. Similarly to Supergirl, but in a much more disappointing manner, Legends of Tomorrow did not have a very good start at all. I remember being extremely excited for this season, only to end, only for it to end up being disappointing. The main villain is actually my least favorite main villain in the Arrowverse. The characters and the relationship and the drama between them, except for a few exceptions, are god-awful. Hawkgirl and Hawkman are the worst characters, some of the worst characters in the entirety of the Arrowverse. I really think that the only thing going for this season is the action, which isn't terrible necessarily, but let Legends of Tomorrow Season 1 is definitely, or was definitely, not a very good start for this show. And I, and I, and I think I'll put it in the D tier. So like I said, Vixen Season 1 and 2 are pretty much equal in terms of their quality. I think this season might have a little bit better of a villain, but there isn't really much else that is necessarily better than Vixen Season 1. They're, they're basically equal. Again, it's way too short. The animation, the voice acting, it's not very good. There's nothing really too exciting about anything about this show. It's a lot better than Freedom Fighters The Ray, but still, I would put Vixen Season 2 in the D tier, probably right next to Season 1, which is also probably at the bottom of the D tier. 
Arrow Season 5, you already know my favorite season in the Arrowverse. I think this season has a pretty good season-long storyline, but it also has an incredible rivalry between the main hero and the main villain, with the main villain Prometheus, or Adrian Trace, or Simon Morrison being my favorite main villain for any one season of the Arrowverse. I think the acting is the best it's ever been on the show, the action as well, it's so good. I think this season is, it's like the greatest comeback season of the of, of, in TV history, coming after season 4, which is in the F tier, Arrow season 5 is in the S tier. The Flash Season 3 is maybe the most disappointing season of the Arrowverse for me personally. Not that it's bad necessarily, it's just that it's kind of boring for a lot of it. And also, Flashpoint was so disappointing, it's insane. I think that Savitar Wall is a good villain. I think that uh, while he looks really cool also, the reveal of who he is came way too late in the season. And the fact that he was the third speedster in a row, and I don't, I don't have any problem with speedster villains, but the fact that they did three in a row, that maybe was not a very uh, good idea. And Savitar kind of struggles as a villain because of it as it's the same thing we saw over and over again in the first two seasons. I don't think the season is bad necessarily, but I also think it is the worst season of The Flash for me personally, so I would probably put it in either the C tier or maybe even the bottom of the B tier. We'll see after like I rearrange it at the end it, where, where it fits better. Supergirl Season 2 is definitely better than the first season, but not by much. The main villain is still terrible. The action is really bad. The acting is really bad. There's still a lot of stupid feminism going around in this season. The, really, the only reason it's better is because Superman was in a couple episodes, but even then, two of the episodes he was in kind of wasted him, and one of them even threw him under the bus, making uh, him look worse so that Supergirl looks better. Although, I think the first two episodes are pretty great because of Superman. This season is definitely, while it is a little better than Supergirl Season 1, not really that good either and I would probably put it either at the bottom of the D tier or more likely maybe at the top of the F tier which I guess I'll just leave it in a D tier for now which speaking of we might need a little bit of room there but we will we will see if we need it again anyway Legends of Tomorrow Season 2 is a huge improvement over Season 1. The season-long storyline is pretty good. The main villains in the Legion of Doom with Eobartho and Malcolm Earl and Damian Dark, as well as kind of Captain Cold in there as well, are great. They are they are one of the best main villains in the Arrowverse as well, or at least like in the top 10 or something. Legends of Tomorrow Season 2 is a lot more fun, a lot more creative. It's a lot better than Season 1 overall. It improves in basically every way, except for maybe the action, which it seems like the budget was lower for the season, which maybe the action isn't as good but I, i'd rather good characters and a good storyline with good villains over just great action which is really all we had in season one i would say legends of tomorrow season two probably even deserves to be in the in the maybe the a tier but for now i'd probably put it in the b tier but it definitely would be at the top of the b tier at that Arrow Season 6, very similarly to The Flash Season 3, is very disappointing. Like, the, my disappointment levels for those two seasons are almost identical, with the Elite and New Explosion happening at the end of Season 5. Season 6, the way they handled it, really soured me on the season overall for a very long time. It didn't help with the Green Arrow, John Diggle storyline. It also didn't help with Caden James being the villain. And later on, it didn't really help that Ricardo Diaz, while he was a lot better than Caden James, was so much worse than I expected him to be, especially as a fighter, but also, like, everything about him this season definitely has some good things about it i think the action is great there are parts of it that i really really like but arrow season six is definitely a pretty disappointing season overall that i'd probably put in the c tier but we will see if i move that up to the b tier it won't be any higher than the bottom of the b tier but for now i think the c tier is where it's going to be the Flash season four is set to be the worst season of The Flash, but I think a majority of the fan base. I don't. I don't agree. Actually, I think it's better than season three. I think there are parts of it that are actually pretty good, especially like in the suit. I think that the suit makes every single scene where you see the Flash so visually pleasing. I think that visually, this is the best season of The Flash, where you have episodes like Enter Flash Time, which again, visually, it's it's the be it's the best Flash has ever been. It looks so great, and it is my favorite season. I mean, not season episode of The Flash. I think that the thinker is when he is played by Neil Sandilands a great villain it sucks though because he isn't really played by Neil Sandilands to be for most of the season which is where the season really really went downhill in my opinion but when he's played by Neil Sandilands the season really holds up and I think it is really good Iris is definitely pretty annoying which is the main complaint of the season overall but I wouldn't say it ruins the season for me and I think it's still a little better than the flash season three so I'd put it in the B tier
Supergirl season three again a little better than season two. Actually, it's a lot better. Like the, for the first two thirds, like before the Dark Kryptonians and uh, what was Argo uh, was incorporated to the season, it was pretty good. Rain was a great villain. I like the I kind of like the drama going on. I like Supergirl as a main character in this season. It sucks though because like the last third of the season is god awful, like on par with season one god awful. But other than that, it's a pretty good season. But because of that last third, I'd probably put it in the C tier. Legends of Tomorrow Season 3 is even a little bit better than Season 2. The season-long storyline of Season 3 is really, really good with a great main villain in Mullis. I love the team dynamic of this season, and it's just a lot of fun. Because of that, I would put Legends of Tomorrow Season 3 in the A tier. So then we have two seasons of Freedom Fighters the Ray in a row. I'll do both of them together here because they're basically the exact same thing. They have all the problems that the CWC shows have in general. Poor animation, poor voice acting, the it doesn't really fit with the continuity of the Arrowverse, especially Freedom Fighters of the Ray. These just don't make sense at all. They have the Green Arrow from Season 4, the Flash from Season 1, which is a year before that, with Mr. Terrific from Season 5, which is a year after Arrow Season 4. It makes no sense with the continuity of anything that, that has been uh, that has happened in the Arrowverse, including the crossover Crisis on Earth X. It's not very good either. It's like most of Season 2 is just a, a big fight. With I don't really remember anything from Season 1 over Overall, it's just not good. It's got all the problems that the CW Seed show has as well. Did I mention that it's incredibly short like Vixen? Because of that, I would put both of these seasons right here in the F tier, and Season 2 might be lower than Arrow Season 4. So that brings us to the four new seasons of the Arrowverse, Arrow Season 7, The Flash Season 5, Supergirl Season 4, and Legends of Tomorrow Season 4. So let's start with Arrow Season 7, which had a great start with the first seven episodes, or at least the prison storyline. Everything that was happening outside of the prison storyline, looking back, wasn't very good, but at least the prison storyline was incredible. That being said, everything that happened after the prison storyline, it wasn't good. The main villain in Amico Queen was god-awful, like, at least from the acting perspective. She was just such a bad actress. And and the character in general was not very good. There was uh, there was a good amount of elicity after he got out of the prison. It just wasn't it just wasn't good. On top of all that, the Green Arrow never wore his mask or hood, which sucked for me personally. So because of all those things, while the first seven episodes, or at least the prison storyline, was good, uh, which then uh, our season seven probably would have been in the A or maybe even the S tier. For now, I'd probably put it in the C tier. So, we're going to need more room in the C or D tier, we'll see, but I'm just going to make that bigger. Anyway, we have The Flash Season 5, which I personally really like. I hate the costume of The Flash. The vis visually, this is the worst season of The Flash, but I think story-wise and acting-wise, it's pretty good. I think the season-long storyline is pretty good. I think that the acting in the season overall is pretty great. I really like the conflict between Nora and Barry in, like, for a couple episodes near the end of the season. Reverse Flash is an incredible secondary main villain, and you can argue even a main villain for the end of this season and the entirety of the season really but the ending conflict between these two is really really good obviously cicada sucks both ver both versions especially the first one and every episode where we saw team flash defeat him was so annoying over and over and over again but i think in the end it ended up being a, pre a pretty good season in the flash season five so i'd put him in i put it in the b tier So Supergirl does get better every season, and Supergirl Season 4, I think, is a little better than Season 3, mostly because of Lex Luthor. The thing about him is he only appeared in three episodes, but those three episodes just just alone elevate this season past the rest of Supergirl. That being said, before he appeared, and basically whenever he doesn't appear, the season is not very good. In fact, I would wager to say that like the first couple episodes of the season are on par with Supergirl Season 1. It's good that the ending is, is good, because that's the most important part for any season for me, the last a couple episodes or at least the ending which is what you you are left with and that's like the what, what the season and the impression of the season is so it's a good thing that supergirl season 4 had a good ending with a great main villain otherwise it wouldn't be any higher than the c tier but it definitely is a higher than supergirl season 3 when i rearrange the tier list I was kind of under the impression that Legends of Tomorrow found its footing with Legends of Tomorrow Season 2 and 3, 
but I was wrong because season 4 is god awful. It might be worse than season 1, honestly. It's really bad. I hate the mythical creatures that we see in this season. They're god awful. I hate the fact that this season has so many original characters and such a lack of DC characters or DC lore. There's, rare, there's barely any DC things going on. And top of that, it's barely a superhero show. The characters barely wear their costumes. They rarely ever use their powers or their skills. It's not funny, I don't think, at least for me personally. It's not very funny at all, and I think because of all those things, Legend of Tomorrow Season 4, which I think is on par or maybe even a little worse than Season 1, is either in the D tier or maybe even in the F tier, but I think for now I put it at the bottom of the, C of the D tier. So I'll pause the video right now, rearrange the tier list to more accurately represent my actual ranking. So here is my final ranking. In the F tier, we have Freedom Fighters The Race Season 2, Arrow Season 4, Freedom Fighters The Race Season 1, and Supergirl Season 1. In the D tier, we have Legends of Tomorrow Season 1 and Legends of Tomorrow Season 4, which I ultimately decided is a little bit better than Season 1. We also have Supergirl Season 2, Vixen Season 1, Vixen Season 2, and Arrow Season 3. In the C tier, we have Supergirl Season 3, Constantine Season 1, The Flash, Season 3, Supergirl Season 4, Arrow Season 7, and Arrow Season 6. In the B tier, you have The Flash Season 4 and The Flash Season 5, as well as Legends of Tomorrow Season 2. In the A tier, Legends of Tomorrow Season 3 and The Flash Season 2. And the best of the best in the, a in the S tier, Arrow Season 2, Arrow Season 1, The Flash Season 1, and Arrow Season 5. Let me know what your tier list would look like in the comments down below, and if you have any other ideas for tier lists, let me know as well. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Oh,